Okay, I'm going to gavel open the 103rd meeting of the National Advisory Council for Human Genome Research. Welcome everyone, it's great to see you. Those of us joining us virtually, thanks for joining. There's a lot of energy in this room and a lot of, um, of great conversation, but we're gonna have to move on and get the actual meeting started. Now, I know what many of you are immediately thinking. You're all going, what? Who is this person sitting to Eric's left? And that's because it's a new person. And you're all thinking, that's not Rudy Pizzotti. What the heck is going on? Well, I can tell you that uh, today is the day the baton is being passed as Jen Troyer is taking over as exec secretary of this advisory council. Um, so welcome, Jen. I am confident that we are, will be in good hands with Jen. Um, but before I actually turn things over to Jen to guide us through the open session, I would actually like for Rudy to please come up here and one last time sit in the exec sec chair <laughs> for one last. And as you might anticipate, <laughs> you, you might anticipate it could be a little bit of an embarrassing time. And here, wait a second. <laughs> Do this. Not to confuse people watching on YouTube, that is not Jen Char. So, so, alas, Rudy is retiring at the end of the year, and so this will be his last council meeting in his uh, role at NHGRI. Um, in my director's report, as you might expect, I will have a slide about Rudy's retirement, and I will provide some relevant facts and accolades about him. But having an NHGRI Titan retire uh, deserves more attention than one relatively short director's report slide. Now, how all, I know for a fact uh, that all of you um, have come to appreciate that Rudy is an incredible executive secretary of this council. And he's also a scientific review officer extraordinaire. But some of you have often wondered, who is Rudy Pizzotti, PhD? <laughs> so I thought I would share that with you along with some more detailed facts than I'll provide in my director's report. So uh, I won't go back to the beginning, but Rudy earned a double BA in biology and chemistry from Indiana University, Bloomington, and a PhD in animal virology from the State University of New York at Stony Brook. In 1982, 1982, Rudy came to NIH to begin a postdoctoral fellowship under the, the mentorship of Dr. George Corey at the National Cancer Institute. He then received funding from the American Cancer Society and a postdoctoral fellowship, an F32 grant from NCI to support his postdoc training. And during his postdoc years, he developed a rat model system to study how oncogenes could regulate the metastatic phenotype. Then in 1988, Rudy took a position as an associate member of the American Red Cross, Jerome H. Holland Laboratory up in Rockville, Maryland. And he actually received funding from the NCI as an independent investigator in 1990 to study, um, to continue studying the genes that regulate metastasis. Rudy then came back to the NIH in 1992 as a senior staff fellow within the intramural program of the NCI and his research focused on the regulation of the metastatic phenotype in a rat model system, and studies designed to map genes involved in the development of prostate cancer in humans. Uh, Rudy then got wise, and he decided to join NHGRI. Uh, no, he decided to leave the laboratory and become a member of our scientific review branch. It was then the National Center for Human Genome Research. It was even before we became an institute. Um, and that was 1996 when he became a scientific review officer. A year later, in 1997, our institute became an institute, and Rudy then became the chief, and I think part of the time served as co-chief ever since, of the NHGRI Scientific Review Branch, um, a role where many of you probably first got to know Rudy, I suspect, um, or where he is, shares responsibility for overseeing the review of all the grant applications and contract proposals assigned to NHGRI for institute-level review. Well, if you fast forward, um, in, in 20, I became director in 2009, and then in, by 2012, Rudy took on the role as deputy director of the Division of Extramural Operations, and importantly, came to this seat, becoming uh, the exec sec of the National Advisory Council for Human Genome Research, you may recall prior to that was Mark Geyer, who served in that role, and 
you all know what an incredible job he has done as the exec sec at this council, setting a very high bar that Jen will, that she will get there uh, for sure. I have all the confidence, but it is a high bar. Um, it is following some, some pretty big uh, shoes to fill. So now, more than 30 years of service in the US government and 28 years of what is now NHGRI, Rudy has is, is earned a good, his retirement, and he is going to be retired at the end of 2024. So that's the Rudy Pizzotti story, but it doesn't give you enough numbers. And we're, we're, we're data-driven scientists. So let me add to the story with some data. To start with, here are some numbers related to Rudy's NHGRI peer review service. Since he began working at NHGRI in 1996, Rudy has organized over 140 review panels. In that time, he's recruited over 1,800 people to serve on those review panels. And the total number of applications reviewed in the meetings he has organized is almost 2,000. The NIH database, by the way, seems to archive the data for review meetings held before 2010, and so that's not available for the analyses I'm about to tell you. But since 2010, the applications he has reviewed have requested more than $4.5 billion of support. Um, that is the ask for the applicants, of course, not the actual, um, um, it's the ask. It's, it's not the number of dollars that NHGRI actually awarded. I only wish we would have awarded that much. Uh, Rudy suspects that that four-ish billion dollar figure would be doubled if you would look at the data from the review panels he ran from 1997 to 2010. So it's just an astronomical amount of money, number of review panels. Um, how uh, you could possibly, I'm sure he remembers almost all of the 1,800 people and almost all of the 140 review panels. Uh, he was asked for what are sort of the two things he was the most proud of amongst that incredible history. Um, one thing he said uh, was that he organized all of the peer review meetings for the large-scale NHGRI sequencing centers that go back to 1997. The last review of the sequencing centers was in 2016. He pointed out that managing the conflicts that existed with the center investigators was a major challenge, especially as you can imagine the early days of the Human Genome Project. Um, he organ second thing that he's highlighted, and I remember this well, and it was truly a Herculean effort, and he was amazing how he did it. He organized all of the H3 Africa Common Fund review panels that evaluated the U54 applications and the investigator-initiated R01 applications, the biorepository U41, and the bioinformatics centers U41 applications, and the R01 applications for LC research projects in Africa. You can imagine these reviews took place um, uh, you know, it, at times that were incredibly challenging. It took place in 2012 and 2013, but you can imagine conducting peer review of African investigators was really a challenging thing because it was the first time some of these had, people had written grants and certainly had dealt with the NIH system. So extraordinary uh, how he did this. Now, I, I, got a, I, I, I am so uh, happy for Rudy that he gets to move on to the next part of his life journey. I am sad he's leaving. Um, and I was sort of thinking about, and I'm sure many of you, there's so many words that could be used to describe Rudy. I'll just start the bidding. I would just say my initial five phrases for my interactions with him for many, many years, he is extremely wise. He has incredibly high integrity. He's overwhelmingly kind. He wouldn't admit it, but he's unflappable and calm through all sorts of circumstances, probably not internally calm, but he absolutely is unflappable. And most important, I think, in many ways, he's everyone's friend. I don't know anybody that doesn't regard Rudy as a friend. So we wanted to share uh, some things to, to, um, to give to Rudy um, to, and, and saying goodbye, especially uh, associated with this moment. Now, and one actually came, and I'm gonna show you what they are. One came unsolicited. I, was, I had an idea for saying that's the second thing I'll give him. But um, the first one, um, our graphics artist, uh, Daryl Asia, when I had him helping me do the second thing, he said, well, you know, you've got to, oh, I was gonna show, yeah, so this is what many of you remember about uh, Rudy, if you, especially um, if you've watched um, in his role as exec sec. Of course, you also remembered what his, uh, I don't know, that's your bedroom or your, uh, looked like during the pandemic. And um, in particular, what, what during council, when you would see him like this, the room was always very tidy, it was very calm. It seemed like for a lot of staff meetings, the dog would be bounding in, and sometimes the bed would be unmade. So, and um, you know, so as as we think about it, you know, many of us, uh, this is how we feel about Rudy departing NHGRI. But at the same time, 
we want to make sure that we're applauding and being happy. I was actually going to show this for a while. I realized that would get really irritating after a while. So I actually came up with something to cover it up, which I think was appropriate because it's on, this, on sand. You know, that's what you should be doing, hanging out on beaches and the like uh, after you retire. But this is what my graphics artist said. He said, wait a second. He goes, every time I hear Rudy's name, I think of the famous movie. And um, for those of you who can't read this, it says, when people say dreams don't come true, tell them about Rudy. And it's about this kid that was a walk-on to the Notre Dame football team. And he shows up with his bag of, um, of, of football equipment, and then he becomes a hero. Some of you obviously don't watch sports movies like I do. OK, <laughs> never mind. So and, and actually, un, uh, totally his idea, Daryl said, we have to commemorate Rudy along the lines here. So he made this, which <laughs> says the same thing. But tell them about Rudy, and, and notice, notice that's building one in the back. I mean, isn't AI incredible? That's building one in the background. So the first of two things is a frame version of this. I want everybody to see that. And all, all we can surmise is that the, the sporting goods equipment, by the way, this movie's so old, I don't, the, the sporting bag doesn't even have wheels. Athletes these days, they all have wheels. This, his bag is probably filled with grants, probably the first set of grants he had to review. We used to print out grants and mail them around. All right, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is a bit more personal with me, uh, which is why I want to present it here. Um, I remember when Rudy joined the Institute, and I think fairly soon after, he, and I was an intramural investigator at the time, and then by 1997, he recruited me to be on a, st a standing study section, which is allowed. We could have intramural investigators be on standing study section. I was on something that was then called the Genome Research Review Committee, GRRC. And I was on that from 97 to 2001. And we just became great friends and colleagues. Uh, certainly spent a lot of time interacting with him when I was on that. But I was one of the few people in the intramural program that really knew Rudy, therefore. So we always were very good friends. And, and stayed in touch even when I was no longer on, um, on, on his study section. When I became NHGRI director for those five things I had already appreciated about Rudy, extremely wise, high integrity, overwhelmingly kind, unflappable, calm, everyone's friend, I actually reached out to Rudy. He was one of the first people I reached out to. And I said, Rudy, I really I, I need to learn a lot about extramural. And yes, I have great people like Mark Geyer, Jane Peterson, Jeff Schley, others. I said, but I could really use your wiseness, your integrity, your calmness, your friendship, your unflappable. So he actually came over on a, I guess it was a detail. It was, a, it was as a special advisor. And he spent months and months working and helping me just make sure everything stayed calm as the new director of the institute. And it was amazingly helpful. Um, and, um, and I've always uh, been very um, grateful to Rudy to helping. Uh, and by the way, I remember when I became the director, Rudy was one of the people that just came up to me immediately and said, Anything you need, just ask. I will help you, absolutely. Anything, anytime you need anything. And that's absolutely been the case um, uh, since 2009, I can tell you, now nearly 15 years. You know, he obviously has assumed other um, roles, as you heard me say before. Um, he became um, uh, the deputy director of that of division. He's always been the review chief. And then I asked him to assume this role um, as uh, the council's exec sec. He also has served as essentially the exec sec, we call it of the extramural leadership team, which is a group where we get together and he's really orchestrated all those meetings which take place virtually every Tuesday, et cetera, et cetera. So I have interacted tons with Rudy, which is both a blessing and a curse because it means that I've gotten a lot out of him, but he's, had a, he's got a big dose of me, which can be a little overwhelming, I'm told. So I was thinking back on when I left GRRC, which was 2001, so 23 years ago, I remember what Rudy did. He gave a gift to me as an, and by the way, as there's, there's those who know me well will not be surprised when I say the following, I, I don't throw anything away. <laughs> I'm, I'm a total pack rat, but I'm an organized pack rat. And I vividly remember that he had given me this T-shirt, and it only took me five, I mean, since 23 years, I've probably gotten 300 t-shirts, right? All the swag at meetings. But I quickly found this t-shirt. And so you can see it there. It's right there. And what it says on it was, it says, GRRC, that's the name of the study section, low pay, long hours, what's not to like? 
and I still have this T-shirt, and I'm not giving it back to you because I keep everything. <laughs> but what I did create, was able to create, was sort of a similar themed, it's like working with Eric. Low pay, long hours, what's not to like? <laughs> and so now you get a framed version of that. So I uh, just want to end by saying, Rudy, thanks for everything. Um, you uh, are uh, absolutely been a joy to work with. Uh, this council, I know, has been, and, and by the way, and actually, I bet you any amount, I'm looking at the current council members. I know when I recruit council members, I give them a little bit of a spiel, and then hope they say yes. I almost always say yes. And I almost always end the conversation by saying, and the best part of working on council is you're going to deal with Rudy Pizzotti. And, I, 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 and, and a lot of people know Rudy because maybe they've served on a review committee, and that always seals the deal. And it's like they're always a little hesitant to be on my con And I go, Rudy, oh, OK, it's Rudy's going to run it. That's fine. So I know what council members think of Rudy, and I know all the compliments I get. So Rudy, on behalf of this council and obviously the institute, and we'll be dealing with your retirement at the institute later in the year. We have you till December, but they only have you through uh, today. So on behalf of this council and all the years of councils you've been serving and all of those many people, uh, thank you so much for everything you've done to help make sure that this council runs so smoothly and is able to be maximally effective for the institute. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I have to tell you, all morning I've been pretty disoriented because the, the room looks backwards to me sitting back right there. Um, uh, Eric, I'd, I'd like a copy of that list of those characteristics. I'm going to share those with my wife this evening. And I don't think it'll change much of the dynamic, but at Here least we'll try. Thank you. Um, so Eric was very kind. Uh, one of the things that we did early on in the extramural leadership team, or ELT, was <clears throat> a certain amount of succession planning. And uh, it was understood that when Mark Geyer decided to retire that I would become the exec sec. Uh, but that's as far as the decision-making process went. So about a year after that, uh, it was February Council 2012, uh, my phone rang at 6.30 in the morning. Now in February uh -huh. in Washington, it's dark at 6.30 a.m. And when your phone rings and it's dark, it's never a good sign. And it was Betty Graham, my division director. And she said, Rudy, you have to get into work right now. And I said, Betty, whatever is wrong? And she said, well, Mark Geyer's father died last night. And he's on an airplane to California. He's going to meet his brothers and settle the estate. And you have to come in and run the council meeting. Now, I'd had absolutely no preparation for this. And this is actually one of those nightmares that you have from time to time. Fortunately, I did have my clothes on at that point, but uh, I came in and I sat in this chair in a different building. And all I remember from that day is Comfort and Betty handing me stuff to read. I had absolutely no idea what any of this meant. And uh, my recollection when Eric gaveled that meeting to closure at about 6 p.m. was there were just all these little fires kind of smoldering around me. Uh, and then as Eric slipped his, uh, his uh, uh, laptop into his briefcase, he turned to me and he said, oh, by the way, there was just an emergency IC director's meeting called for tomorrow, so you'll have to do this by yourself tomorrow. <laughs> At which point I just said, okay, what difference does it make? Um, but the point of me reliving that story with you is that that council actually succeeded. It accomplished all that it was supposed to do. And I had no idea what I was doing. So the person that sits in this chair isn't nearly as important as the people that sit in those chairs. And I want you to know that. And I want to implore you that when you get a phone call or an email from NIH and people ask you to serve on a council or a study section or a workshop, I know you're oversubscribed. I know you don't have the time for it but please try to find time for NHGRI and for all of NIH. We can accomplish wonderful things with you, and it would be impossible without you. So thank you for your service to NHGRI and, and NIH. And thank you for being lovely people to work with.
see how nice we were to you, Jen? We didn't do anything to make you not know you didn't have to come one cycle early or anything. What a smooth transition. Yeah, what a smooth transition. So we're doing a little better with the succession planning here and that I have backup if I need it.